Hi, my name is Siti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at 15 top tips for Google Docs. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now this is very personal and these are my top 15 tips for when you're using Google Docs. Now you might have your own and I would love to hear them in that comment section below. So do scroll down and let me know your favorite features or tips in Google Docs. Now the first one on my list is voice typing. Now voice typing can save you a huge amount of time and Google Docs built-in dictation tool is actually really good. You can use all sorts of punctuation and it picks up on even slight variations in your accent. So I would highly recommend that you try it out. Now in order to find it simply go to tools voice type. Now once you've opened it you get an extra little microphone symbol and that microphone symbol will allow you to start recording. You can change the language and once you've clicked it and given access to your microphone it will turn red. Once it's red it means it's listening to everything you say. You can dictate things such as period or full stop and it will also add that punctuation. In addition to that there's some advanced features where you can change the font size or font color and I will link to the instructions of those commands below in that description. And that was the first. Now that brings me smoothly into the second one because we all like a bit of formatting. Now the way we'd like to format our documents is not only with different font sizes but also different fonts. And this is my second tip. Google Docs has a vast library of extra fonts that you can add into your Google Docs. In order to get access to these extra fonts you need to first add them. Now where do you add them? Well simply click on the drop down arrow next to your font and then click on more fonts. This will open up the Google Fonts library and here you can now select fonts and add them into your shortlist. The shortlist is the list that will show up and you can then quickly find them in the future. Which brings us to the third tip. Now the third tip is to not only insert an image but also do some very basic edits within the Google Docs editor. So let's go ahead and insert an image. We're going to go to insert image and you can now choose how you're going to insert that image. Now I'm going to upload an image from the computer but you can also do a Google search. And there we go. Now that that image is here we can simply click on the image once and two new options appear at the top. We can replace the image or we get some image options. So go ahead and click on the image options and this is where we can do some very basic editing. We can now recolor this image, we can adjust the brightness or contrast but we can also crop the image. Now in order to crop the image you will have seen that a new icon appeared next to image options and that's the crop tool. So go ahead and use the crop tool, crop your image and then I'd like you to try and recolor it. Using these very basic tools we can make our document look even better. Now this brings us to the fourth tip and this is very closely related to insert an image but this is where you're going to insert a drawing. Now what's great about the updates that Google Docs has been rolling out over the past couple months is that now when you insert a drawing you have two options. You can either have a standalone drawing within your Google Docs or you can link to an external Google Drawings file and whenever that file is updated you can update your image inside Google Docs. Now let's have a look at this by clicking on insert and then drawing. You will see new or from drive. New is where you create an image within your Google Docs and this will be editable only within Google Docs. If you select from drive you can select any drawing and once you've selected this drawing you can now choose to link it or unlink it. When you leave it linked whenever the file is updated you will see an update button in your Google Docs. I love this feature and it's a feature that many of us are unaware of and it's very useful for graphs, charts or all sorts of learning materials. Now talking about using it in classroom tip number five is collaboration. Collaboration is at the core of every Google product and Google Docs is no different. So simply click on share at the top and this gives you the option to now collaborate with others. Now you have various different settings and you can also share the file not allowing others to print, copy or edit. Now there's three main sharing options. You can either give permission to edit, you can give them permission to comment or permission to view it. You can also prevent editors from changing the access rights or you can disable people from downloading and printing the document. And once you are collaborating that brings us to tip number six and that's leaving a comment or directly commenting people that you are collaborating with. So when you are leaving a comment in the text you can simply right click add a comment but let's say that you want to add a comment and you need it actioned by someone that you're collaborating with. Well you can either add a plus or at symbol. Once you do that you can then type their name and they will be notified of this comment. 
they can be assigned this comment and that means that they actually have to click on done after actioning it. This is a very useful feature for documents that you're collaborating on with many different people but only one person has to be notified of a change. Which brings us to tip number seven and that's email your collaborators. Now instead of resharing the file with all the people you want to notify of changes, there is an option to simply email a select few people within Google Docs. File, email collaborators. Now once you do that, you can now type up your email message and you can tick or untick the people that will receive this email. This makes it a much more user-friendly experience and instead of always resharing the file and maybe accidentally giving the wrong rights or changing the rights, you are emailing your collaborators about the change without touching the sharing permissions. Tip number eight, page settings. Now, we all use different paper formats and different printers, but our page settings can be changed. So we can change the paper size, but we can also change our margins. And this is something I do a lot, especially when working with tables or adding design into my document. The first thing I would do is set up my margins. So go to file, page setup, and then we're going to change the margins. You have a top bottom left and right margin and you can change these here. You can use a O point or smaller margin as well or you can make the margins very big. In addition to that you can change the paper size and this allows you to use different sizes of paper when working with different printers. Tip number nine, header styles. Use your header styles and don't worry, you're not limited to the header styles that are built into Google Docs because you can apply your formatting to a header style. The first thing you do is simply select the text that you would like to change the header style for. We're going to go to the header styles drop down menu and now we select our style. Now let's say that you're not happy with the styles available, no problem. Simply do the formatting of your text first, highlight your text go to the header styles and when you hover over one of these header styles you have the option to update it now when you click on update that new formatting will be applied to the old header style this is very useful because it not only makes sure that all your text is using the same formatting and that there are no discrepancies it also helps you later on when you're building a table of contents where it's automatically going to pull in the various titles tip number 10 the explore button now the explore button is incredibly powerful but in google docs it's probably one of the most powerful tools that we have because the explore button allows us to not only do research it also allows us to find images to cite our sources and do so much more. So let's go ahead and click on the explore button. This brings up a field and we can now search for any term. Now I'm going to use the term tiger. It brings up three different menus. Now the, now the first is the web, second images, and then the third one, that's where they go into my Google Drive and find that search term. Great for when you're looking for documents to link. Now I'm going to stick to the web and let's say that I want to use some text from the Wikipedia page. I can simply click on that link and that will open up in a new tab. Now the reason they do that is because they don't want to close down the explore window. You can now find the paragraph you'd like to use and let's just simply copy paste a paragraph. And there we go, I've now pasted in that paragraph, but I do want to cite my source and because I have that explore window still open, I can now cite the source. The first thing you have to do is decide the citation format. Now the citation format can be changed by clicking on the three dots and then select MLA, APA or Chicago. Now I'm going to select APA and then I'm going to hover back to that link that I've clicked on and you will now see those quotation marks. So simply click on that and automatically your citation is brought into your document. And so I'm simply going to tap return and now I'm going to go to the images tab. When you click on an image, you get the large version and then you can insert at the top. Or if you already know that the image will work for you, you can simply hover over it and then press the plus. And there we go. I have a paragraph, it is cited and an image all by using the explore function. Now stop for a minute, scroll down and leave in that comment section which one has been your favorite up to now. And then we're going to continue on to the 11th tip or trick that you need to know in Google Docs. And that's using a template. Now you can use a template by either going to docs.google.com and selecting from the template gallery. Or when you're already in a Google document, you can go to File, New, From Template. When you do that, you get two different windows. 
Now the general one, these are all templates generated and created by Google and you can use these and then just tweak them to your needs. The second one that you see here, this is my domain. This is my G Suite for Education domain. And these are templates submitted by users in my domain that then can be shared with other users in my domain. So let's say that I have a certain format for invoices or planning or, or for meeting minutes. This is where you can submit those templates. So when you click on your domain name, you will see there is nothing there at the moment, but you can submit a template. Back to general, you can use any of these templates. Now using templates can save you a huge amount of time. So I highly recommend that you have a look at the different templates available and then just select those that you would like to use yourself. Now tip number 12 allows you to automatically replace a predefined text into anything you'd like it to be. It could even be a full paragraph. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set it up so that whenever I type FT web, it is automatically going to put the full URL of the flipped classroom tutorials website. First thing you have to do is click on tools, preferences. Here you can now add your own preferences. So in the left hand box, you will put the original text and in the right hand box, you put the text you'd like to see it replaced with. So left, we're going to replace FT web and we will be replacing that with the full URL. Go ahead and click on OK and let's test it out. We're now going to type FT web. As soon as I press space or return, this is replaced. Now this is great for when you have certain paragraphs that you'd like to use over and over again or long parts of text that you'd like to use again and again and again. Well, simply set up your own shortcuts. Which brings me to tip number 13, and that's downloading your document. Now, Google Docs allows you to download your document in a range of different formats. Now, the way you can do that is by going to File, Download As, and now you can select the format you'd like to use. You can use a Microsoft Word format, a PDF, or even an EPUB format. This is great when you're creating your own manuals and you wanna publish them or share them as eBooks. Similarly, we can email our documents. Now, emailing your document means that you're not sharing it out but you are going to email it with another person let's say that person has a yahoo email address and no access to the google ecosystem well no problem simply go to file email document you can now choose the file format you'd like to email it as add your subject line and then also the message now email a document will only give them access to this one file and it does mean that they will not see any of the updates that you add into your document later on so make sure that you only use this when it's absolutely necessary and the 15th tip is app script now app script allows you to add extra functionality into google docs that is not currently available now i've done a number of videos on some of these features in app script and i will link them in the cards at the top and in order to find the script editor you go into tools and then script editor this will open up a contained script editor that means that this app script is part of your google document and not separate from it and this allows you to add some extra functionality such as pop-up windows which i will link in those cards at the top and those are my 15 tips for google docs but i do have two bonus tips now the first bonus tip is using the spell and grammar check now google docs has recently done an update and they now have grammar checks as well as spell checks. Now the spell and grammar check can be found in your tools bar again, tools, spell and grammar check, and then simply go through the spell and grammar check. They will ask you if you'd like to keep the original or if you'd like to replace it with their AI suggestion. And the second bonus tip, and this is a little workaround, is going to show you how you can insert a video into a Google Doc. Now, at the moment, inserting video is not supported in Google Docs. However, it is supported in Google Slides. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a Google Slides file. Here, we're going to insert video and then just simply paste a YouTube URL. This will insert this video into our Google Slides. And we're going to now click on this, Control C to copy it and make our way over into Google Docs. Now, this is not the end, you can't just simply paste it. We're going to have to insert a drawing because drawing can interpret these links. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on insert drawing and we're going to create a new drawing. So we're not linking to an external drawing at the moment. Paste in your video and you now have your video inside your Google document. It cannot play inside the Google Docs editor, so you do have to double click and then click on the video inside that built-in drawings window, 
but this is a great way of adding more content into a Google Documents. I hope you found this video helpful. Scroll down into the comment section below. Let me know your favorite feature. Which feature did I miss? And which feature do you like to use best in Google Docs? I would love to hear your thoughts in that comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up, share it out to someone who could use it. And I hope that you've subscribed to the channel already. If not, hit that bell so you can be here for the next video. In the meantime, watch one of the previous videos and I thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.